Oh. On their deathbed, warning you. This whole time we've been thinking that the worst people in the world were those who kill and torture, but it's actually those who yeah, force Jewish. you to learn and better yourself. No, no, it's chemistry teachers that are the worst people. <sighs> okay, so we're going to talk about uh, inscribed angles, which builds off what we talked about last time, which was central angles. So a central angle is an angle where the vertex is the middle of the circle. An inscribed angle is an angle where the vertex is on the circle. So instead of the sides being radii, like they were with the central angle, the sides are, the sides are going to be chords. Chords go from one side of the circle to the other. Now, this diagram that I drew of an inscribed angle um, does not go uh, through the diameter. But because the diameter is a chord, I could also draw an inscribed angle that actually went through the center. Let me try that again. So if one of the chords is the diameter and the other one's just a random chord, that is a possibility for an inscribed angle where the diameter is one side of the angle. There's another case where it doesn't go through the diameter, but the center of the circle is outside the angle. So for example, if my two chords look like this and the center's here, that's another type of inscribed angle where the center of the circle. Is this reverse psychology? If it's something Brock put in chat, I am forced to assume that it is a classic and hilarious joke. Because it really was a joke. It started off with me, kid, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> everything Brock puts in chat, just like everything I say out loud, is solid gold. The other type of inscribed angles when the center uh, of the circle is in the angle. Those are our three types. And we will very creatively name these case one, case two, and case seven. Would it be bad if we called it case seven? Would it be bad? Would it mess us up? No. I mean, it's kind of a messed up thing to do in the first place, but no, I don't think it will have an adverse effect on your life. Awesome. Unlike, say, attending a show at the Coliseum during the time of Caligula, which could work out poorly for you, apparently. So the relationship between a central angle and the arc formed by that angle were that they were equal. The central angle, if that was 50 degrees, then the arc of that, the arc that was intercepted by that angle would also be 50 degrees. That's not true of inscribed angles. The relationship between an inscribed angle and the arc intercepted by that angle is not equal. The angle is half the arc. Uh, um, the measure, let's say the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. 
And that's the big math thing for today, the measure of its intercepted arc. That's the, uh, that's the definition we're gonna be using throughout the day to solve some cool problems. <laughs> you know what? You're right, it is fun. So an inscribed angle is what happens whenever you have two chords that form an angle. Two chords forming an angle is an inscribed angle. Two uh, radii forming an angle is called a central angle. There's another possibility that we haven't talked about. What if your angle is formed by one chord and one tangent? Uh, that's not what it's called, but you can call it that if you want to. This is an angle formed by a tangent and chord. It actually forms two angles. Let's look at this one. Now, even though this one looks different, it is two chords instead, or two, a chord and a tangent instead of two chords, it still follows the same rule. And the rule is the measure of angle BAF is equal to half the measure of arc AB. Or if you wanted to use the other angle, this one over here, you could say that the measure of angle B A E is equal to half the measure of arc. And I have to use, this is a major arc, so I have to use three letters, A, C, B. So it still follows the same rule, it just looks different. So I'm gonna show you a few corollaries 
to the uh, these inscribed angles. Corollaries mean like conclusions we can draw based on the rules that we've just talked about. Let me show you a really common type of inscribed angle. This is kind of a cool looking diagram here we're going to do. We're going to do two chords. Thanks. My question is, in this circle with these chords that I've drawn, which angles are congruent? It would be if I had told you that any of these lines were parallel. Well, we got to have parallel lines to do the transversal thing, and we don't have them. Hmm? JK and ML might be parallel, but I, I didn't say that they were, so we can't prove it. Uh, yes, the vertical angles would work, but I should have been more specific in my question, which inscribed angles are congruent? Ellie is correct. There are two pairs of vertical angles here that are congruent. You're right. But I, I'm asking specifically, can you show any inscribed angles are congruent? Well, let me help you out here with the first one. Let's look at angle K, J, L. Which arc does angle K, J, L intersect? Arc KL. And let's look at angle K, M, L. Which arc does inscribed angle K, M, L intersect? So because they intercept the same arc, that means they must be congruent. Now, how big are they? I have no idea. I mean, wasn't given any information, but I do know since they intercept the same arc that the measure of angle K, J, L must be congruent or equal to the measure of angle K, M, L because they intercept the same arc. That means we have another pair of congruent inscribed angles here, don't we? MLJ and JKM would also be congruent because they intercept the same arc. For the same reason. So this is called, for reasons I cannot explain to you, the first corollary. I guess because they came up with this one first. First corollary to the inscribed angle theorem. Let's talk about the second one.
when you see a point in the middle like that, like point C in this diagram, that's telling you it's the uh, center of the circle. Generally, you don't put a point there unless you mean it's the center just because it's confusing. Is that the center is it not? So if you see a point, it's safe to assume it's the center. Sometimes the problem will even go a step further and say DF is a diameter, which is helpful. But here's my question. How big is angle DEF? It's the size of angle DEF. One half of arc DF, that's exactly right. How big is arc DF? If, if segment DF is a diameter, how big is arc DF? 180 degrees. Because it's a semicircle. Mm -hmm. That's how I get the 180, right? Mm -hmm. Because the whole circle is 360. So a semicircle, which is when you cut it in half, would be 180. You're exactly right. Couldn't there be two triangles? Like, couldn't there be there two could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could draw another one on the other side. But my question is how big is angle DEF? How do you know? Yes. What I can say then is that because DF is a di diameter, the inscribed angle that intercepts it. must be 90 degrees. And this is the second corollary. To the inscribed angle. Second corollary, there is a third corollary, but if there's a fourth corollary, I might have a coronary, right? Right, kids? I think Rachel has officially become one of us because as soon as I said that, she just started shaking her head. I can feel your disappointment, Rachel. I can feel it. Two more weeks, you're going to get burned so bad. Two more weeks. We already did once. Yeah, so every two weeks, we get burned once by Rachel. You know what? I, if Rachel limits herself to once every two weeks, I'll consider myself lucky. But as you all know, once you get the first one out of the way, it just kind of snowballs. It just kind of snowballs. The first one is like, can I get away with it? And then once you figure out you can get away with it, it's just nonstop abuse. You open that door for us to do it. This is why high school is the perfect place for me to be teaching because I have no feelings. Mm -hmm. If I had emotions or self-esteem, you guys would have killed it a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, but when I do it to you, it's funny. When you do it to me, it's just mean-spirited bullying. Roasting you Scroll down, like, so you can see more of what I just did. There's the, there's the second corollary. Can you see all of the second corollary? You can't see the last letter that you There we go. Okay. Now in this problem, I don't have enough information to say whether I have angles that are congruent. I wasn't given enough information for that. 
I do have enough information to say that there are two angles that are supplementary. Which two angles are supplementary and how do you know? No. Supplementary means they have a total of 180. So let's look at the first angle you talked about, which was angle B, A, D. And the arc that is intercepted by angle B, A, D is arc B, C, D. I can't say that that's a semicircle because I don't know that BD is a diameter. So that's why I can't say that these are congruent or 90 or whatever. But now let's look at the angle that is opposite that, angle BCD. What is the arc intercepted by angle BCD? That's arc BAD. And these two arcs combined are what? 360, because these two arcs, arc BAD and arc BCD together, went around the entire circle. The whole circle is how many degrees, Peyton? 360, if inscribed angles are half of that, then the two inscribed angles together must be 180. So what I can say is that the measure of angle BAD plus the measure of angle BCD is 180 degrees. I don't have enough information to say how big either one of them is. They could both be 90 or they could be literally anything else with a sum of 180. But I do know that the two of them together have a sum of 180, which means I can also say which two other angles were supplementary. A measure of angle ABC and angle ADC have a sum of 180 degrees. And this happens when you have, um, this is called an inscribed quadrilateral. We'll get to inscribed and circumscribed shapes later, but for now, inscribed quadrilateral. Hey, let's actually use that corollary in a problem. What do you think? Oh yeah, sorry, I need to label that, don't I? This is the, it's actually called the ninth corollary. There might be a million bajillion, but we only learned two, uh, we only learned three. We learned one, two, and nine. And by nine, I mean three. Third corollary. Please don't write one, two, nine. I was just kidding. Okay. Funky looking shape. Looks like like the <laughs> a spaceship that has had severe battle damage. It's like the Superman shield, but you can the, the buggers got to it. <laughs> it's like the Superman emblem, but you it It's like the Superman emblem if he tried to sew his own costume. Yeah. <laughs> Superman's first day sewing up a costume. Oh, did I do two Q's? I sure did. <laughs> I did two Q's. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's QRST, obviously. I did QQST because I I'm bad at English. Uh, 
Uh, no, but if you want to do some shorthand, you can label this side of the shape uh, Taylor because it's a QT. Cutie. Gas station? Cutie. Yeah. That's also what my mommy says I am, a cutie. <laughs> my mom calls me a gas station. That's confusing and mean. You're welcome. Son, you're a cutie, by which I mean, if I smell you for too long, I start to get sick. <laughs> And your bathroom is disgusting. <laughs> I think it's weird that you insulted me for not being good at English and then just said, ain't that bad. <laughs> Sounds to me like I need to help you get way more better at English. Okay, help me out here. I know angle Q and I know angle S. Why do you hurt me? The arcs. So arc TQR and arc TR together would equal 360. What about the angles? The angles equal 180. This is the third corollary. So set up an equation for me, children. Mm -hmm. Nailed it. I will give you uh, one minute to tell me what X is. Tell me what X is. The value of X. Very good. You didn't even need a whole minute. We did some algebra. Well, Emily did some algebra. I choose to take her word for it. It'd be 10X minus five equals 180. Then it'd be 10X equals 185. 185 divided by 10, 18.5. Cool, but the question was not, what's X? The question was find Q and S. There they are. There's Q and there's S. Done. I found them. Plug them in. So to find the measure of angle Q, I'll do my X, which was 18.5 plus two. That is 20.5, outstanding work. 20.5 degrees. There are two different ways that I could figure out angle S. One of the ways is I could substitute 18.5 in for S or in for X in angle S. What's the other way? There we go. Because I know that they're supplementary, I could say that the measure of angle S is 180 minus 20.5, which is 159.5. I think that's the lazy man's way to do it, so I approve. But you also could have, if you really wanted to, the nine multiplied by 18.5 minus seven, which I really hope is 159.5 degrees. Either method is fine. The method that Christian suggested, I think, is the best because it's the fastest and requires me to do the least amount of work, which I'm a big fan of. But plugging it back into S, I mean, if you have a calculator, it's not like that's way more work than just subtracting it from 180. Either way is fine. Now I am ready to receive your geometry related questions. Wow. Um, yeah. Our equation for finding the math. No, but I was thinking this morning on the radio, they said they were talking about 
a bunch of people um, trying to get uh, COVID vaccines. And they said, there's a ton of people trying to get their vaccines. It's like a ton of, in America, a ton of people could be like eight guys. <laughs> like we're pretty hefty in this country. A ton of people might be eight people. Tons of people, like if it's plural, 15 to 20 people could be tons of people. Yeah, there are like tons of people. And my first thought was, that's a lot. But then I was like, wait, that could be like fewer than two dozen people. That's a meaningless, that's a meaningless number. A ton of people might be anywhere from eight on. So tons of people could be anywhere between eight and infinity people. Brock, good point. A ton of elephants is barely an elephant. A ton of elephants is barely an elephant. Elephants are really A ton of earths is just like a couple of buckets. Way less than one earth. Okay. Any more geometry related questions? Okay, good talk, everybody.